The moment the sun finally moved out of the way, the James Webb Space Telescope locked onto something no one was prepared for. The interstellar object known as 3i Atlas had returned. But this time, it wasn't quiet. It was blazing, over 400% brighter than before, as if it had just switched on a hidden engine of light. Webb recorded a glow that didn't behave like dust or frozen gas. It pulsed. It moved in smooth, intentional waves, almost as if the surface was adjusting itself to the heat pouring from the sun. When astronomers sharpened the images, their screens froze. Beneath the shimmering reflection, a new shape began to appear, perfect hexagons, aligned in a metallic grid. A lattice too clean, too organized, too deliberate to belong to anything drifting randomly through the vacuum. And then, before they could process what they were seeing, another signal appeared. A faint ultraviolet flash, repeating every 247 seconds. Not chaotic, not random, but measured precise. The kind of timing that felt closer to a coded transmission than to any natural cycle. None of it fit, not the shape, not the glow, not the pattern, because this wasn't the behavior of a comet. It wasn't the behavior of anything we've ever known. So if 3i Atlas came back glowing sharper, stronger, and more controlled than ever, one question now hangs over everything. Why did it return at all? Long before it reappeared, 3i Atlas had already earned a place in the short, mysterious history of interstellar visitors. Only two others had ever crossed into our solar system before it. The first was Aumuamua in 2017, that cigar-shaped wanderer that spun like a shard of mirror, leaving scientists arguing for years about what it truly was. The second was Borisov in 2019, a more typical comet of ice and dust that burned bright, then slipped away. And then came Atlas, the third visitor, and by far the most puzzling. From the moment it was detected, astronomers treated it differently. Every major observatory turned its gaze toward it. Hubble, Keck, the VLT, the Subaru telescope. The coordination was unlike anything seen for a comet. Because from the very first data set, something about it didn't feel right. Its orbit wasn't smooth. Its light curve refused to match any known model. Some nights it brightened too fast. Others, it dimmed in strange symmetrical dips. When scientists compared notes, the numbers didn't add up. Its trajectory behaved like something being influenced by forces that weren't gravitational at all. Still, they watched. Because when something comes from another star system, you don't look away. Then, just as the data started to tease at answers, 3i Atlas disappeared behind the sun. The silence that followed was total. Weeks passed. No readings. No updates. Just a growing sense that, when it came back into view, it might not come back the same. And when the sun finally moved, they were right. The first new measurement stunned every team watching. Its reflected light had spiked more than fourfold. No comet behaves that way. They brighten gradually, unpredictably not like this. This wasn't a flare. It was a transformation. Webb's thermal sensors reported something even stranger. The surface temperature didn't rise as it approached the sun. It didn't cool as it moved away. It stayed constant perfectly regulated, as if the object were actively controlling its own heat. And the light, the light wasn't chaotic like dust scattering sunlight. It rose and fell in perfect fluid motion, smooth transitions, intentional balance, almost like adaptive panels adjusting themselves with every orbit, rotating to manage exposure, like a machine keeping itself alive. Theories collapsed one by one. Dust jets couldn't do this. Ice vents didn't fit the data. No natural mechanism could hold that kind of thermal balance while shining with such intensity. Whatever was on that surface, it wasn't following the laws of comets. It was following commands. Then the images sharpened, and the structure revealed itself. Beneath the glow were hexagonal patterns, tiling the surface like armor. They shifted slightly between frames in unison. Not random cracks or shadows, panels. And each one reflected light differently, as if controlled. Observers compared the behavior to radiators on deep space probes, systems that pivot to dissipate heat. But this object wasn't a spacecraft we'd launched. It came from another star, and now it was operating as if it knew exactly what it was doing. By then, one realization quietly spread among astronomers. These weren't the chaotic flares of a dying comet. This looked engineered. It looked alive. 
And then came the anti-tail. When comets near the sun, their tails always point away, pushed by solar radiation and the solar wind. It's one of the most predictable patterns in astronomy. But with 3 I Atlas, the universe broke its own rule. Instead of trailing behind, the tail pointed toward the sun, directly into the light. At first, astronomers thought it was a trick of perspective, but then Hubble confirmed it. So did Keck. So did the European Southern Observatory. All saw the same impossible direction. The anti-tail didn't drift, didn't scatter. It held its line stable, consistent. Natural gas jets don't do that. They scatter as the object spins. They erupt from weak spots. They never lock into one precise heading. But this one did. It looked anchored. It looked like thrust. As models failed, suspicion grew. This wasn't gas being pushed by sunlight. It was something being fired. The pattern resembled not chaos, but propulsion. And for the first time, the conversation in observatories and message boards shifted from what is it made of to who built it. Then came the spectrum. When light from 3i Atlas was broken into wavelengths, the results were unlike anything from a natural comet. Instead of a noisy blend of elements, the signature was clean, dominated by nickel and iron in refined ratios. Pure metal alloys, the kind we use when building something meant to last. And within that alloy's reflection, astronomers found faint traces of cyanide compounds, molecules that don't appear randomly in interstellar space. They were locked into the object's reflective pattern, not drifting around it, fixed, integrated, as if chemically engineered into the structure itself. Even more shocking was the internal resonance. The light curve pulsed as if traveling through hollow chambers, not dense rock. The object's measured mass didn't match its size. It was far too light, too hollow, too deliberate. Natural comets don't have cavities or internal resonance. Machines do. And that was the quiet truth settling across late-night labs and control rooms. Maybe 3 I Atlas wasn't born. Maybe it was built. Then, a small observatory in Spain captured the footage that changed everything. Using a 2-meter telescope, they took 159 consecutive frames. At first glance, the object drifted calmly across the dark, nothing unusual. But when the frames were stacked and played in sequence, a thin jet appeared, firing from its side. A beam of light and plasma, narrow, unwavering, sharp as a laser. It didn't bloom or scatter like dust. It didn't shift with rotation. It stayed locked, anchored to one spot. Natural vents flicker. They wobble. This didn't. This was a thrust vector. Frame by frame, the jet remained identical. Every burst carried the same intensity, and each one subtly nudged the object's path. Not randomly, smoothly, purposefully, the object wasn't drifting, it was steering. Even the most skeptical astronomers paused at that. If an object from another star system emits controlled, consistent jets while adjusting its trajectory, then by definition, it's under control. By what no one knows. But the implication was clear. We weren't watching a comet. We were watching a vehicle. And then silence. As it moved behind the sun once again, every telescope lost sight. Weeks passed, no reflections, no signals, not a single photon reached any sensor. It wasn't just hidden, it was gone. The blackout was absolute. The timing couldn't have been worse or more perfect because behind the sun is the one place in the entire solar system where nothing on earth can see. No optical telescope, no radio dish, no radar. If something wanted to transform unseen, that was its moment. And when it came back, it was different. The glow was sharper, the structure more defined, the jets stronger firing in a new pattern. Whatever happened behind the curtain of the sun, it wasn't random evolution, it was modification. And then the ultraviolet flashes began, pulsing every 247 seconds, perfectly timed, no drift, no deviation. When the data was decoded, the pulses aligned with the sequence of prime numbers, two, three, five, seven, 11 a pattern that nature never makes on its own, a mathematical signature, the kind of signal humanity itself would send to prove intelligence. But it didn't stop there. One flash extended, lasting 13 minutes and 37 seconds. When scientists graphed the wavelength shifts, the pattern spiraled outward, a golden ratio curve, encoded with binary markers repeating in loops, a message or at least the structure of one. 
SETI researchers went silent because the pattern matched the same training templates used to teach students how to recognize an extraterrestrial transmission, prime numbers and the golden ratio, the two universal languages of intelligent design. If this was coincidence, it was the most precise accident in cosmic history. And then it made its final move, a subtle change, 0.09 degrees in trajectory, tiny, almost imperceptible. But for an object with no known propulsion, it meant everything. Moments later, its velocity climbed, clean, smooth acceleration, not from sunlight, not from gravity, a controlled burn, 3 I Atlas was leaving, not tumbling into space, not fatting into entropy, leaving as if it had completed something. It had revealed itself piece by piece, the surface, the structure, the jet, the signal. And when it was done, it simply turned and went home. Maybe it was never meant for us. Maybe we were never meant to see it. Maybe it came to check on something or someone and left before we could understand. If 3i Atlas was a probe, it didn't just pass through. It studied us, watched how we reacted, measured what we knew. And once it was finished, it vanished, quietly, perfectly, like a machine obeying orders written long before humanity learned to look up. So the question isn't whether it was real. It's why it came back and what message it left behind when it did. Because somewhere in the silence between those ultraviolet pulses, somewhere in the math and the light, the universe may have finally answered a question we've been asking for centuries. We are not alone. That's it for today. Let us know what you think 3i Atlas really is in the comments below. And subscribe to Astro Dynasty, because the next revelation from the sky may already be on its way.